My name is Idris again, and I'm here to take you through, um, to inspire you to learn tourism. And today, um, we're going to look at um, still product knowledge. This is something that we want you to, to have hands on, and then probably tomorrow you're able to sell and be in this business outright. We want to discuss Uganda. Briefly, U U Uganda has a lot, unlike Rwanda, but Uganda has a lot, about 10 national parks. But very quickly, we want to give you an insight of what is taking place in each national park, what are the key attractions. Uh, we, we're going to start with Bwindi. Uh, Bwindi National Park, located in southwestern Uganda, uh, for your information. This is one of the most popular visited parks in Uganda. It has the mountain gorillas. If you talk about the mountain gorillas, definitely your head will run to Bwindi. Uh, it's about 512 kilometers away from Kampala, which is about uh, eight to nine hours. So you need a whole day to drive from Kampala to Bwindi. See, but by flights, we've got flights going to uh, Bwindi. You can fly by Aerolink. Uh, it's a domestic flight from Entebbe to uh, probably Kihihi, or you probably fly to Kisoro Airstrip. And it takes about two hours. You either go on a morning flight, uh, or you definitely put your guests on the afternoon flight. So the key attractions, we got the mountain gorillas, are famous there. We got the birds. We've got um, the forest itself. The forest has got rivers and you know waterfalls. We'll look at all this in depth and I will definitely share a description of uh, this particular park for you to do further reading in our descriptions below. The local communities. Gwinda has got local communities. We'll look at uh, these. Probably uh, people come and do the village visits here. So the most famous activities that actually take place in Bwindi, it's the gorilla trekking. We got the gorilla trekking and the gorilla habituation. Gorilla habituation sounds a bit new uh, to most of you, but we'll also explain what gorilla habituation means in terms of visitors experience in our next videos that you'll probably be publishing on this very YouTube platform. We've got the culture visits, uh, the Batwa. Bwindi has got a section of these communities around there. So uh, very quickly, we'll also look at um, Budding, we can't forget budding activities, the guided nature walk. These are key activities that probably one doesn't have to miss while in Bwindi. So let's quickly look at the lodging facilities. We've got the Sanctuary Gorilla Forest Camp, we've got um, Bohoma Lodge, we've got Bwindi Lodge, we've got the Trackers, we've got Gorilla Mists, we've got Chameleon Hill, uh, Lake Mutanda Resort, uh, we've got the Silverback Lodge, Second park that we can look at in Uganda, are probably the smallest national park, uh, Mugahinga Gorilla National Park, located uh, in uh, southwestern Uganda still, uh, bordering Uganda and Rwanda, which is about 482 kilometers from Kampala. This park has got the mountain gorillas as well. So we've got two homes for the mountain gorillas, one that we previously talked about, Bwindi Forest National Park and Mugahinga Gorilla National Park. Special about Mugahinga, the golden monkeys. The only park in Uganda where you can come face to face with the, mon uh, with the golden monkeys in Mugahinga. Mugahinga has got, is part of the three volcanoes. We got uh, the Mohabura, the Karisimbi, and Mount Gahinga. So, key activities that takes place here. Before the activities, maybe we can highlight the attractions. We've talked about the gorillas, we've talked about the birds. The birds, so probably someone would go in Mugahinga for bird, you know, bird watching. We got the Batwa, the Batwa community, and probably so many people have had, you know, the Batwa experience, the walk into the forest, to the hunting experiences, to the Garama cave. So it's very interesting. So the key activities, of course, we've got the mountain gorilla trekking, uh, the volcano climbing. The experience is awesome. We've got the golden uh, monkey trekking. Uh, the bird watching, we've talked about the Batwa experience, very key. Uh, we can also look at uh, the lodging around Mugahinga a National Park. We've got the Mount Gahinga Lodge, high-end property where you can put those high-end guests. We got Kiso Tourist Hotel, uh, we got uh, Kiso Traveler's Rest Hotel, uh, quite a number of facilities around uh, Mugahinga. Definitely you can access Mugahinga by road, uh, it's about 
nine hours as well. Full day from Kampala, as we've already mentioned. It's a long drive. Probably you can as well fly in to Kisoro Airstrip. Uh, it's, it's about two hours and um, the only flight that goes to Kisoro, the morning flight, probably leaving at about seven o'clock. All right, we look at the other national park in Uganda, uh, which is uh, Renzori Mountain National Park. This is a block mountain. And its highest point is about uh, 5,109 meters above sea level, which uh, the highest peak is Margarita. Uh, basically, this is a snow-capped mountain. And uh, being a mountain, it's an attraction. But we also have some other attractions. The local communities talk about the, the Bakonjo, that river around Kasese. Got some beautiful lakes on top of the mountain. You know, the village visits, we'll talk about them as well. Uh, so the key activity in Mount Renzori, don't forget where the mountain is uh, located, the national park in Kasese. Kasese is about uh, 398 kilometers away from Kampala. That's about seven hours drive. You can go through uh, via Fort Porto, uh, down to Kasese or you can also use the Masaka Highway. That's pretty about Kasese. You can do hiking, the mountain hiking. You can do the eight day probably to the uh, peak uh, Margarita. You can as well take one day or two day of your guests to hike this beautiful mountain. Uh, the birds are present and people can, your guests can be, you know, uh, can do more, uh, bird watching in a... Uh, then the other item that we can look at on Renzori could be the lodging around. People can stay at uh, Margarita Hotel. This is one of the oldest hotels in the region uh, around the Mount Renzori. Uh, we've got um, Ruboni Community Campsite. This is a budget travelers, those that doesn't wish to spend high. We've got um, the Ipeta Snow, one of the high-end facilities around there. So you can fly to Kasese Airstrip, very close to the mountain, or you can drive. You can access the park by drive. And we already said seven hours on the road. So that's pretty what we can say about Renzori Mountain. All right, uh, the other park we need to talk about is Kibari Forest National Park. Uh, which is around the forest of Port Porto area from Kampala. Kibali is about uh, 358 kilometers. That's about five hours of drive time to this uh, forest national park. Uh, the key attractions, we look at the chimpanzees, the birds. We've got uh, the other primates. We've got quite a number of various uh, species of monkeys in the forest. But definitely we have the local communities as well living, different tree species. That's pretty common about Chibale, but the most unique attraction are the chimpanzees in this forest. The key activities, of course, chimpanzee trekking, chimpanzee habituation. There, there is a difference between the two and we'll, uh, in one of our videos that will come back to you and probably give you an insight of what chimpanzee trekking and chimpanzee habituation in terms of you know activity ex or the experience the difference in the experience of both experiences good nature walks you can do a guided nature walk around the edge of the forest or inside the forest you can do birding this is pretty interesting around Fort Potro and around Kivali people have gone to beautiful sceneries over the crater lakes Chivale has got quite a number of, or Fort Porto has got quite a number of crater lakes in the region. Uh, the lodging in here where people, your guests can actually sleep, we got uh, Chaninga Lodge, we've got Primates Lodge, we've got Crater Safari Lodge, uh, Ndali Lodge, pretty those are, each national park has got very many, but in this case we'll be talking about very few, but definitely in our course manuals and in our trainings, we we'll definitely have to give you everything. How to access Chivali? Definitely, we've talked about driving, about five hours from Kampala. And you go via Mitiana, Mobende, into Fort Potro, or you can as well fly your guests to Kasese. This is the nearest airstrip to Kasese. Then you drive about one and a half hours or two hours, smooth road to the park. All right, Depot Valley National Park which is in far north, actually northeast to the uh, Uganda 
uh, Sudan border, uh, which is about 571 kilometers. Kidepo is one of the most beautiful national parks in the region that you dare want to visit. A purely game, a game park. You can see the buffaloes, the giraffe, the ostriches. Unique about Kidepo, the ostriches, the cheetah. You can see the cheetah in uh, Kidepo National Park. This is, this is one of the key, these are the key attractions probably that it's all about wild game. In location in terms of accessibility, you can drive all the way from Kampala. You need about more than 12 hours. You have to start very early, you connect to Kidepo. So we recommend probably to fly your guests and by flying you can access, you can fly by aerolink, very important in terms of accessibility, probably two hours from Entebbe Airport to Apoka, Apoka Airstrip. The key activities, game drive. Your guests can do a morning game drive, they can do a full day game drive, an evening game drive in Kidepo and they will never get disappointed about the wildlife of that place. You can visit Kawaramajan community, we've got the Iki, the Iki you know, tribe, very interesting. The na nature walks, um, call them the bush walks as well in uh, Amajan. The Kidepo river, they can visit the Kidepo river. They do birding around Kidepo, it's an interesting activity in there. Quite a few lodging facilities around Kidepo and one we can talk about the oldest, Apoka Safari Lodge. We got Ngamoru Wilderness Camp. We got Kidepo Savannah Lodge, and um, probably the new kid on the block. We have um, Adere Safari Lodge. Amazing. Lake Mburu National Park is one of the other parks that we have in Uganda. This is in Ibarra area, which is about 253 kilometers from Kampala. This is the most central park of all the national parks in Uganda. Uh, drive time, about three and a half hours in Kampala and Barara. The key attractions here is the wildlife. We've got the wildlife, talk about the wildlife animals uh, like the zebras, the giraffes, the hippos. The lake, Lake Imburo, actually the name of the national park is derived from the lake. So we've got very aquatic, beautiful birds aquatic life such as the crocodiles, all that stuff. So the key activities you talk about in Lake Imburo, probably the game drive. You can do the morning, the sunset, and probably the night game drive. Lake Imburo is known also for the bushwalks. You can do horse riding in Lake Imburo. Uh, you can do the boat safari on the lake, you know, to see all those aquatic wildlife, the amazing hippos, all that stuff. So the Accommodations in Lake Imboro, uh, probably we can look at Mihingo Safari Lodge, a pretty high-end facility over there. Uh, Rakobo Safari Lodge, we've got Lake Imboro Safari Lodge, we've got Acadia Cottages, Eagle's Nest Lake Imboro. So those are the facilities that you can actually, in terms of accessibility, by road, you can drive. Three hours, you are the park. Well, um, the other park uh, that we have to look at here, it's uh, Mount Elgon National Park, located at the Kenya-Uganda border, far east of Uganda. Uh, it's about 229 uh, kilometers away from Kampala, which is about four hours drive. The key attractions here, of course, the mountain itself, Mount Elgon, uh, we've got CP Falls. Uh, we've got the two tribes, when it, we talk about cultural experiences, the Gishu and the Sabine, very interesting. The activities, uh, the famous one, the hiking of Mount Elgon, then the hiking of uh, to CP Falls, uh, the coffee tours, the place is well known for coffee tours, for those guests who want to actually experience uh, coffee from the crop to the cup. It's amazing. Uh, the cultural experience, uh, we've talked about the Gishu and the Sabine, the way of life of the two tribes, it's, it's, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, there are accommodations that probably we can have uh, guests uh, camping. Uh, we can talk about the Sipi uh, River Lodge, Mbare Resort Hotel, we've got Lakam, we've got uh, Rose's Last Chance, and probably on the mountain, your well, guests will definitely stay in uh, intense camping. That's about uh, Mount Elgon National Park. We look at Queen Elizabeth National Park, which is around Kasese area. That's about uh, 389 kilometers you know, from 
Kampala to Kasese, which is about seven hours. Queen Elizabeth and Mount Renzori National Park closed each other. But uh, the key attractions of uh, Queen Elizabeth National Park, uh, we got the wildlife. Uh, Queen Elizabeth probably has got sections. We got the northern section of the Kasem Plains, then we got the southern part uh, that is famously known as the Shesha section. We, we can have Queen Elizabeth in parts. Uh, for example, we can talk about the Chambura Gorge as a key attraction. Maramagambo Forest is over there. We have the Kazinga Channel that joins the two lakes, Edward and George. We've got um, the birds as key attractions. We talked about the animals themselves. We have the local communities as well living around. We've got some beautiful lakes like Katwe in Maramagambo. We've got the Blue Lake. So uh, the activities in Queen Elizabeth, famous one, the Safari Game Drive. Both in the northern side, the Kasemi Plains, people can do the morning game drive and the evening game drive. The Kasemi, uh, the Shasha sector where we have uh, the tree climbing lands, so probably that is the most interesting feature whereby people could go and probably see those rare tree climbing lands in Uganda. Uh, Chambura Gorge probably houses the chimpanzees and uh, you can do chimpanzee trekking in Chambura. Uh, you can as well do a guided nature walk in uh, Maramagambo Forest, uh, probably to the Bat Cave. There is a Bat Cave in Maramagambo, uh, very interesting. We've got the Balut Safaris in uh, Queen Elizabeth. Uh, people visit the Lake Katwe, boat cruise or a boat safari between, uh, on, or along the Kazinga Channel. You know, this is Lake Edward and Lake George. We've got birding activities, quite pretty unique activities uh, like land tracking experiences. So down in Shasha, the game drives as well. Birding uh, everywhere, as you can see, across all national park, bird watching is actually very very you know it happens so queen elizabeth uh, those are the main activities uh, the uh, one we've discussed uh, let's look at the accommodations that where we put our guests uh, moya safari lodge uh, one of the oldest we've cham uh, we got chambura uh, gorge lodge it's another high-end property uh, we've got um, kasanyi uh, safari lodge we've got tenganzi uh, in Ishasha, Ishasha Wilderness Lodge, Wilderness Camp, we've got Ishasha Jungle Lodge, we've got Njojo, but guests can as well come as sleep in Kasese. The nearest accommodations are pretty full. Accessibility by road, it's seven hours. Then by flight, uh, clients can fly in either Kasese Airstrip or probably Mwea Airstrip. Uh, Marshall Falls National Park. This lies in Masindi area. It's about 305 kilometers away from Kampala, which is about five hours uh, drive time. The key attractions we bring, the, 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 the Rhino Sanctuary being a uh, close proximity to Mansion Falls National Park, it, it, it makes the park the big game five park, whereby you have to see the, the rhinos, uh, the Zua Rhino Sanctuary. Probably when you get into the park, you definitely have to meet the other big four. So wild game is, is, is pretty common and very popular in the park, including the giraffe, the leopard, the buffalo, the lion. You can see all that. Now, the most unique attraction here is the falls. And, and the park actually derives the name from, from the falls you know, themselves. Balloon safaris are pretty common, as we discussed in Queen Elizabeth. You can as well have balloon safaris in uh, Mansion Falls uh, National Park. You can have game drives. These are some of the activities. A boat safari to the bottom of the falls or probably also to take a hike to the top of the falls. Um, you can do nature walks in Mansion Falls National Park. Bird watching is also very common. You can as well do a boat ride, this time to the Nile Delta. We've got two boat trips one taking you to the bottom of the falls and the other one downstream taking you to the Nile Delta. Uh, the accommodations in Marchion Falls, uh, we've got quite a number of them here. Uh, we'll start with Baker's Lodge, it's a high-end property. Uh, we've got Chobe Safari Lodge, Para Safari Lodge, Marchion River, Fort Marchion. Pretty, there are quite pretty many in Marchion Falls, Pakuba Safari Lodge. So 
this is where these are places where you can actually have your tourists or your clients stay in. More about Machuan Falls, um, in terms of uh, the attractions, we've, uh, it has uh, a section of the Budongo Forest. This is a living forest uh, where you can find the chimpanzees and pretty chimpanzee trekking is ongoing uh, in Budongo or probably guests can do chimpanzee habituation also in Budongo forest, birding, bird watching. The forest is home to uh, hundreds and hundreds of bird species, butterflies, butterflies in Budongo. So many guests you know, are looking at such unique experiences where they could come and probably do the, the butterfly viewing. So that's much on falls for you. And the other park we are looking at, making our 10th national park in Uganda, uh, the Semeliki National Park. Semeliki National Park, which is in Bundibujo area. This is around, um, still in southwestern Uganda, or Uganda Congo border. Famous about Semeliki, the hot springs. But don't forget, Semenik also has the chimpanzee. You can, they can, clients normally go there for what we call the primate walk. You know, they have the chimpanzee research project. Birds, awesome. So Semenik has the birds, the game. They have the game and Lake Albert as well. So clients can come and do a boat, boat trip to, to Lake Albert. And in Semeniki, unique about the birds, this is where one guest can meet the shoe bill. So you can as well, if your clients are looking at the shoe bill, then you can probably suggest taking them around Semeriki National Park. The accommodation properties, uh, facilities in uh, Semeriki, uh, we look at uh, Semeriki Safari Lodge. This is the oldest and uh, among the best uh, properties that you can be confident to put your guests to. Nyati Lodge, uh, former Antoroko, you know, their previous name were Antoroko Game Lodge, but uh, right now they are branded as Nyati Lodge. Guests can stay there. And the other properties, guests can as come as far as Fort Porto or around Bundibujo, probably they stay in some pretty small facilities or motels, some hotels around Fort Porto town. So access to Bund uh, Semiriki, a rolling flies to you know, Semeriki, so you can take a flight. They've got a scheduled flight. Uh, by road, you can take, it's about 357 uh, kilometers uh, from Kampala, which is about five, five to six hours to Bondimujo. So that's all we can share with you in terms of national parks of Uganda. And we're here to give you more information you don't have to get worried, no, you don't have to be a tourism professional. If you need training, if you need uh, any refresher course about tourism, all you need to do is look out for that challenge that you're facing out and we are the experts to take you through. So thank you so much for keeping it right here. I know it's, it has been a long, you know, giving you such good information about the national parks. And I can't wait to see you in the next video. Don't forget to uh, like our Facebook page, uh, keep subscribing to our YouTube channel and follow us on our LinkedIn platforms. Thank you so much and see you in our next video.